Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. Amen. I don't hear anybody saying it. Even though God is good, let's try that again. God is good. All the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think uh, the travel to Virginia is catching up with people. Praise the Lord. I don't know how many of you went. Anyways, uh, I just want to greet you Happy New Year because I'm coming here for the first time of this year. Uh, thank you once again for inviting me. And uh, like Brother was saying, uh, I had traveled to India. We went to some difficult places in India. I was in uh, the state of Himachal and uh, Punjab. You know, Himachal is next to Jammu and Kashmir and you know what all things are happening over there. But God kept us under his protective wings. We were able to minister in different places in Himachal. And it was a blessing going to India and ministering over there. If God willing, probably I'll be going again in March. I think they have called me again to, uh, to preach in several uh, conferences and conventions over there. Anyways, uh, once again, I just want to greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, thank you for giving me another opportunity to stand with the Word of God with you guys. Uh, God has been good. His faithfulness has no bounds. We are, even though we, are, we become unfaithful in our lives, God continues to show and teach us how faithful our God is. Let us raise our hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today I want to read a scripture from Prophet Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 19. This was a scripture that I read in my church as a promise verse for year 2020, and I would like to read that once again over here. <clears throat> Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Let's close our eyes. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord and Heavenly Father, we are thank you for your presence. As you have promised where two more people gather in your name, you have promised your presence. We thank you that you are going to do the work which, which only you can do, Lord. The same spirit which wrote the scriptures will anoint me to speak, so your children will not leave this place without being blessed, strengthened, delivered, healed. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, why do we say amen, you know? Why? Why do we say? Yeah, we are agreeing to what Whoever we said before the word saying amen. So when we agree in the presence of God, God has said that I will give that to you. So if you are sleeping when prayer is ending, you are not agreeing and your prayer is not going to be answered. So be, you know, alert whenever there is prayer. Usually, <laughs> you know, our children at home, even if they are sleeping throughout the prayer, they will remember to say amen, yeah, so that they can get up and do their things. So at least always remember to say amen when there is a prayer going on because that is what, in the sight of God, you are agreeing to the prayer that has been made so that the prayer will be answered by God. So the scripture over here, Isaiah is a very powerful prophet, the most powerful and the, is one of the major prophets that we have. And uh, Isaiah is the prophet who has prophesied about Jesus Christ 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. He's supposed to be the prophet of the 7th century. And he's a very powerful prophet. You know, he's the only prophet who has written 66 books, uh, chapters where we have 66 books in the Bible. So we look at Isaiah, he has done so many incredible things and uh, his t tenure as a servant of God, as a prophet is more very, very powerful ministry that he had done. Over here, uh, prophet is talking about <coughs> Jacob. In chapter 43, he's talking about Jacob. And uh, Jacob, even though he's talking about Jacob, he's talking about uh, who is Jacob? He, God, changed, God changed Jacob too. He, God gave him a new name and he was called? Israel. So he's talking to the children of Israel over here, but he's reminding them something that you had a name, what? 
Jacob. So each and every one seated over here should remember we two are in the same manner. We have a past. Amen. We are here today as children of God, as Israel, but always remember that we had a past. So this past always, always tried to pull us back, always tries to not allow us to reach our promises, not allow us to reach our uh, blessings. Why? Because the past continues to torture us. And the past continues to tell us that you were this person, because you were this person, God has no use of you. God cannot use you. God will not use you. The past will continue to repeat that to you. But the thing is that we need to understand whatever your past is, who has called you, is, that is what is important. Amen? Amen? If God has called you, God is mighty to help you to overcome your past. If you understand, raise your hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. So over here, we are reading a scripture which prophet Isaiah is telling to the children and saying that. What is he saying over here? He's saying, behold, I will do a new thing. Then, now we shall spring forth. Then. And then he's saying that, shall ye not know it? So the thing about the scripture is that God is telling prophet Isaiah to declare this promise to them. Amen. Amen. God is telling Isaiah to declare this promise to the children of God. And he's telling that, what is he telling them is that, I will do a new thing. What is that? Always we think, you know, we hear messages, servants of God, I believe, keep changing, coming over here, speaking to you. And we sit over there with the lean back, thinking, oh, this has been hearing from the day I've been born, right? If you're born in a Christian family, this is something that you've been hearing over and over again. But you forget one thing. This is not like the worldly message. This is the word of God. If you understand, raise your hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because the word of God says, his mercies are new every, every morning. Every morning, if you read the word of God, it becomes new to you. Why? Because only thing, even though it is old, written thousands of years or hundreds of years before, only thing in the world that can become new is the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only thing in the world that can become new, that can become fresh every time you read it is the word of God. So if you give more importance and understand the thing that I am reading is the word of God and the word of God has the power to do things in my life. It has the power to change things in my life. It has the power to make the old new. If you understand that, clap your hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Why? Because only word of God can do that. And God is telling prophet Isaiah, declare this to the children of Israel. The thing is that God knows the conditions of the heart of Israel. And God is saying that there is a condition for this to happen. Now what are these conditions? See, we'll, we'll read that once again. It says that, behold, I will do a new thing. And then he is saying, what is that? Now it shall... Spring forth. Then what is it? Shall he not know it? The thing is that in our life, nothing is happening without the knowledge of God. Amen? Amen? Everything that is happening in our life is by the knowledge of God. That is why the scripture says, he has the count of the number of your hairs. How many of you have counted your hairs? Anybody here? No? Yeah, we, sometimes when we comb our hairs, we see the hairs, but we forget to count it. So we don't know the count. Why, why it is written in the scripture is because what all things God can do, usually man cannot do. I don't think they have invented any computer that can count the number of hairs. I don't know. The computer's technology is going very, very fast, and it is going so fast, Few things computers have not done, and I don't know if it, they will be able to do it, 
But one thing is that they don't know the count of the number of hairs. But there's one thing, God even knows that. Let's raise our hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. If God knows that the minute details of your life, when we go through some difficulties in life, challenges in life, we question God by asking, don't you know God what I'm going through? Yes? How many of you have said that? We have problems at work. We have problems in our families. We have problems in our church. We have problems with one another. And sometimes we become lonely. We, we, we have nobody by our side. And we ask God, God, aren't you seeing what is happening in my life? Amen. You ask Jacob. He, he will give you a testimony and say, yes, I went through that. And you ask Dave, Jacob, he will say, yeah. And if you ask, why did you have to go through that? Oh, it's all my fault, he would say. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, when I preach, I preach as the Holy Spirit leads me. Don't get angry with me. Praise the Lord. Just praise, continue to praise God. And God will take care of the situations. You ask Jacob, he will say, yes, it was my fault. It was some partially my fault and partially my mother's fault. Yeah? Because mother did help me to do what I did. And from that point inwards, you know, we, we are people who sometimes, you know, we cheat and do bad things to people outside the family. Jacob was the one who started doing things. Where? Inside the family. So he had a very bad name. Where? Inside the family. So he had a very, very bad history. His history has been very bad. So he could not stay with the family with that name. So he had to run away from the family. Yeah? We all know this part of Jacob and this history and all these kind of things. So what happened was that this Jacob, because he was uh, chosen by God to be blessed by God, what happened was that even though he had these bad names, even though he had all these kind of history, even all these things were there, he was blessed by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know sometimes word of God... It's difficult to say hallelujah and all, but you have to try to do that because that's how God works in our lives. Praise the Lord. You know, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Even good news comes, bad news comes, things that I don't like to hear comes, but what do you need to do? What do you need to do? Continue praise God. Why? Because without the knowledge of God, nothing has happened in your life. Let's raise our hands once again, give glory to God. Hallelujah. So nothing has happened in your life. So Jacob, what happened to Jacob was that he went, he did all this thing, took uh, his brother's inheritance and all the blessings and he ran away and he became uh, blessed. He got everything that he desired except one thing. What is that? What he did not have? Anybody? No, what he did not have? He did not have peace of God. He did not, when you don't have peace of God, what happens to you? What do you lose first thing? What is the first thing that you lose when you don't, when you lose your peace of peace? Anybody? Sleep. That's the first thing you lose, you know. You have, you have tension in your work, you have tension at, uh, at, uh, uh, with your children, you have tension anywhere. The first thing that you're gonna lose is what? Sleep. So what happened with Jacob? He lost, he could not sleep. He has all the blessings in his life. He, he accumulated all the blessings in the wrong way and his blessings is with him. Now the problem is, got the blessing but lost the sleep. How do you wanna praise God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will just keep you doing this because that is just the way spiritual exercise works. So, <laughs> so, because something has to happen to us. You know, we come to the word of God for correction. We come to the presence of God because, you know, we sometimes come sit in the presence of God thinking we are perfect people. But when the word of God suddenly starts speaking, you know, in the life of David, prophet Nathan comes and starts speaking to him. And Nathan says that in your country there is somebody like this and he did this thing and that thing and prophet and David as a king he has who is there in my country to do something like that prophet being the son of <laughs> a, 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 a man of God said oh it's nobody it's you hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah and see what happened the thing about David was that because he was a man after God's heart 
he, you know, if it is us, I mean, in, in this world today, just think if it's the world today, and if you talk against authority, you know, just imagine you are in India talking against Modi, what is going to happen to you? What's going to happen to you? Lock you up. That's what's happening right now in India. Anybody speaking against his, his decisions that he has made? What is happening to everybody, including the college kids? What is happening to them? They're all in jail. They're not the people who are beating them up, but the people who are protesting are all in jail because you're speaking against people in power. You know, in Iran, what happened? I mean, in America, uh, uh, sorry, in Saudi, what happened? What happened with Kasoji? What happened? He was speaking against the king of the land. What happened to him? They cut him into pieces and they threw him somewhere, God knows where. So this is what happens when you speak against a king or person in power. So Nathan, as a prophet, when he's speaking that to David, in his heart he would have known, you know, if I speak against David, what is going to happen? I'm not going to see the next day's light, right? Actually, because he's a king. But the difference between David and other people in power was that he recognized who Almighty God was. Let's raise our hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. He recognized who God was. He understood one thing that I am seated on the throne not because of my ability. I am seated on this throne because God allowed it to happen. Amen. Amen. Whatever that I have in my life today that I am enjoying in my life is not because of my ability but it is because God allowed those things to happen in my life. That is the reason why I have these things. So even when bad news comes my way, I will take it with a pinch of salt, but I will take it and I will try to make amends according to that because it is the Almighty God who is speaking to me. If God has spoken to me, there is a God in heaven who will take care of my situation. How many want to give glory to God? Hallelujah. However bad the situation is, however bad you have been, however bad the things that you have done in your life, if you are called by God, chosen by God, spoken to you from God, there is a God who will continue to strengthen you, to use you for the glory of God. Amen? Amen? So over here, once again, God is telling prophet Isaiah, tell to Jacob this thing, what is that? So that he will tell the children of Israel, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall he not know it? We should always remember that whatever is happening is not happening by chance, but it is happening because God is allowing it to happen. Amen? In your life, God has already started to do something. Amen? How many of you want to praise God? Praise the Lord. How many of you believe in the year 2020, God is going to do something new for me? Hallelujah. See, the, everything in this, for a child of God, works according to your faith. I hope you understand. Without faith, you cannot do what? Please God. Without faith, there is no way you can please God. So for you to please God, you have to have faith. See, over here, the word of God is coming to you and saying, I'm going to do a new thing. Now for that new thing to happen, what do you need to do? What do you need to do? You need to believe in God. You need to have faith in God. That God is speaking to me and telling to me directly that God is going to do a new thing. And see, what is it saying? How is how that the new thing is going to happen? What is the next part of the verse? It will spring forth. What is that? It is just going to happen. Like you close, shut your eyes and open your eyes, something new will happen. If you understand, clap your hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 You have to receive the word of God in that manner. Why? Because everything happens by God in that manner. Because God created everything out of what? Nothing. By the word, everything was created. So in your life too, for God to do something, you need to receive the word of God. 
So when you receive the word of God, for those who believe, the word of God is power to them. Amen? And for those who don't believe, what is it? It's foolishness. Come on, how is something new going to happen in my life? And how is it going to spring forth? If you don't believe, it's just foolishness. You're just wasting your time over here. For a child of God, this is not the place to waste your time. This is the place to receive the promises which you have in your, in your life by God. Let's raise your hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. This is the place, whichever promise that I have God has promised to me, this is the place that I'm going to receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Whatever happens, I mean, people sitting next to me will say that that is not going to happen. Your family members will say nothing is going to happen. You ask Jacob, nothing good is going to happen in your life. Amen. You ask the children of Israel, the, how, how is there any good thing that is going to come out of Nazareth? Have you heard that before? Yes. But what is going to happen? That is the place chosen by God for something good to happen. If you want to believe, clap your hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Places where you don't think something good will happen, there is the Almighty God who can make it happen. But the condition, there are a few conditions. What is the next part of the words? What does it say? Don't you know it? So the thing is that the word of God is saying that you have to realize it. You have to know it. What is that? What do you have to know? That God is doing something in my life. Amen. Amen. There is a God who is preparing me to do something new in my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to receive this word today evening. Hallelujah. That God is going to do something new in my life in the year 2020. Let's Once again, I want to, you to clap your hands. I want you to give glory to God. I want you to believe in the word of God. I want you to receive the word of God. I want you to see how God is faithful to his children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He does not give a word without, hallelujah, his, his presence over there. He, without his providence over there, without his blessings over there. If God declares a word, hallelujah, servants of God, when they declare a word, there is work following the words. Let's raise our hands and give glory to God, hallelujah. Prophet Isaiah, hallelujah, uh, I mean, sorry, Prophet Elijah came and said, there is not going to be no rain, not even a dew for, till I say. Hmm. And God, what happened? God had to Stop everything, right? For whom? For the prophet. Why? Because he declared it. If you believe that, give glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we receive the word of God, this is what usually happens. The condition over here, I mean, the next part of the verse is like this. Shall he not know it? Then what is he saying? He's telling what is he going to do for you in your life? Read that. I'm going to... I'm going to make a way in the, in the wilderness and going to make what? These are two impossible things which man cannot do. What are that? How can he make a way in the wilderness and make floods or rivers in the desert? Can he do that? It is next to impossible, but nowadays technology is going so fast, these things, you know, are, you know, they're trying to do. But the thing is that these are the works of God. How many want to give glory to God? Hallelujah. God is telling, this is the way I'm going to do, do something for you. What is that? I'm going to make a way for you in the wilderness and rivers where? In the desert, where there is no water, what I'm going to do? I'm going to make rivers for you. How many of you still believe the word of God? Hallelujah. What the word of God is saying is that where, you know, there are some things in your life which you have said, nothing is going to happen to that situation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm speaking to you in spirit. If you receive it and give glory to God, you're going to see the hand of God in your life and you're going to be a testimony. Let's give glory to God once again. Hallelujah. 
the word of God is saying the things in your life you thought there is no way anything is going to happen over there God is telling you tonight that I am going to make a way for you over there how many of you clap your hands and give glory to God hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah it is not you who is going to do that it is the Almighty God who is going to do that and then he is telling hallelujah where you there are things that are impossible to do to make rivers in the desert the impossible things which you have given upon hallelujah God is saying over here and God is telling you in those impossible situations hallelujah you might be looking for hallelujah little bit of waters I'm not going to have you have little bit of waters I'm going to make rivers in the desert how many want to clap your hands and give glory to God hallelujah hallelujah I'm going to do a thing for you in a way so that you understand the world will see that the world will understand understand that it is not by you but it is by the hand of God these things are happening in your life let's clap our hands and give glory to God hallelujah let us praise God because the hand of God is going to do something hallelujah in our life in our family life in this fellowship let's give glory to God hallelujah but there is a condition let's read verse 18 but let's see what is the condition for Jacob or the children of Israel verse 18 do not remember the former things. Yeah, the condition is what? You have to learn to forget your past. Hallelujah. 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 This is the condition. Yes, you have a very bad past. You have a history that is lingering with you. It is very difficult to leave the past away. Unless and until you forget the past, this new thing cannot start. If you understand, raise your hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Many of us, the, the thing that is blocking us from receiving our blessings is who? Who is that? Who is blocking our blessings? Who is that? Ourselves. Always remember that. We ourselves are the ones who are blocking our blessings. Nobody else's blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you to receive the new blessings because unless you become Israel, Jacob cannot be blessed really by God. Just like I was talking about, Jacob got all the blessings. He's become so rich. But he lost what? His peace of mind. What did he lose then? The, the only way you really know you lost something is when you don't have sleep. Yes? You know, you have everything, but you can't enjoy anything that you have got. It's like, you know, somebody, I am diabetic, you put a piece of cake in front of me, it's so difficult. I want to eat it, but the problem is, what is going to happen? I'm going to fall more sick. Why? Because I am diabetic. Jacob has all the blessings. But what's happening to him? He can't enjoy anything that he has. He did not get it in the right manner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a child of God, you need to understand, yes, you will be blessed, but the blessing will come into your life only in the time God has appointed it. When you take shortcuts to get the blessings, what is going to happen is that the real to enjoy, you will not be able to enjoy the blessing. You might have the blessing, but you will not be able to enjoy it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, God already knew that Jacob would come to this point. Where? Where he has already prepared a bed for Jacob. Where is that? Where is that? See, he has decided, I don't have peace of mind. I don't have sleep. That means he probably has not slept for uh, days, for weeks. I know people who have not slept for months. I know people like that. You know, as a pastor, we get to meet all kinds of weird people. Why? Because of, you know, the things that they go through in their lives. And still they are alive. I wonder how they are staying alive with that no sleep and all these kind of things. And Jacob is like that. And God knew and God was preparing a bed for Jacob. 
And what was the pillow for the bed? How many, how many of you have slept on rocks? Hallelujah. <laughs> Nowadays we are looking at the, the bed's comfort level is becoming so higher and higher. The, the, the ex expense of the mattress is going higher and higher. The expense, expense of the pillows are becoming higher and higher because whatever pillow it is, it is not comfortable. We need more and more and more and more comfort. But the thing about Jacob is that even a rock can put him to sleep. Why? Because he has not slept for days. How many want to give glory to God? Hallelujah. And how do you know God was preparing that bed for him? The scripture that we read over there is that there was a ladder and that ladder, what do you see? Angels doing what? As what? Descending or ascending? Ascending, going up and down. So what are they, where are they already? They are down there. What are they doing over there? Preparing a place for Jacob to sleep. How many of you would clap your hands and give glory to God? Hallelujah. God is the one who ordains your steps. God knows where you will be at what point of your life. Amen. Amen. God knows where you will reach with whatever that you have at what point of your life. And that point Jacob is there. What is he there with? He's got all his blessings. He's ready to give half of it to his brother. His brother did not even ask him for that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He didn't even ask for what to give anything back. But the problem is that for him to enjoy anything of the blessings, he, he, he has a guilty conscience which is telling him that he has to return the half of the blessings. Only then he will be able to enjoy anything in his life. If, any, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to any of you, please clap your hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See what is happening over there. Jacob comes there. We read over there. All night what is he doing over there? Fighting with an angel. Right? He's fighting with an angel. And what is he asking the angel? I will not leave you unless you bless me. What more blessing Jacob do you need? Just look back. You have all the blessings in the world. But again you are asking for what? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What are you asking for? He's asking for a little bit of peace of mind. Blessing for different people is different things. If you understand, give glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. For everybody seated over here, blessing is different for different people. Some people, it is peace of mind inside a marriage. Yes? For some people, it's to have a child. Yes? For some people, it is a blessing that can be given for your children. The promises which they are not receiving. For some people, it is health. For some people, it is, maybe it is wealth. For some people, it is peace of mind. For some people, it is something else. So everybody seated over here, blessing is different. How many of you believe that? Give glory to God. Hallelujah. So when we are asking God for blessings, see over here, Jacob is saying, if we read another part, we see over there that we see in the Old Testament, he's fighting with the angel, but in the New Testament, we read it that, I don't have time to say, I'm just telling you the story. We read over there is that he's crying to the angel. He's in tears and praying to God. You, I will not leave you unless you bless me. And the angel said, I cannot bless you. Why? Because you don't deserve it. Yes? You don't deserve the blessing because the way you have lived your life, you don't deserve to be blessed. And he, and he continued to cry, continued to cry, continued to cry. And then it was suddenly it was going to become day. And, and the angel said to him, you have to let me go. The sun is going to come up. And then he said, no, I will not leave you. I said, okay, at last, sometimes this is how we get some blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All night we cry. I need to get the blessings. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Even when we don't deserve the blessings. Praise the Lord. We forget who we were. How we reached in this point. Why we are crying, we forget. And the angel said, okay, I will bless you. Seeing his tears. But he did one thing before, before leaving him. What did he do? What did he do? He touched his hip. Why? So that he will not make these mistakes again and come to me for blessings. If you understand that, clap your hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes to receive the blessing, even if it's a blessing, it is painful because you did not deserve that blessing. Amen. Amen. He came as a perfect person, but he's leaving. How? Now he's not going to walk like normal people, right? Yes? Why? The world needs to see. From tomorrow onwards, he will be blessed. But the world needs to see what he had done. There is a consequence for the action that he did. If you want to believe, give glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know it is you know, difficult to praise God in these difficult situations when these kind of words come out. But remember one thing. God is a faithful God. Let's clap our hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why God is speaking to prophet Isaiah and telling the children of Israel, yes, you have a bad history. Yes. You know, the children of Israel. What happened to them? They, in their lives, what happens that they are blessed by God, they backslide, and then what happens? God will send, a, they start crying. When they start crying, God will send a savior into their midst, a prophet or somebody to deliver them, and then they are delivered, and they brought out, and again, they are blessed. Then what will they do again? Again, they will backslide. Every time blessing comes, again they will backslide. And again, and this history just keeps on repeating. They don't understand what is happening in their lives. They just keep on repeating the same things again and again. And now, God is telling them one thing. See, I'm going to do completely something new in your life. Amen? And he is telling for that new thing to happen, you need to forget your past. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is a difficult past. It is very difficult to forget these things. But you have to forget. Only if you forget, God can do a new thing in your life. Amen? Read that verse 18. We'll just understand that. See what it says over there. Remember ye not the former things. Don't remember the former things then. Neither consider the things of old. And then what? Behold, I will do in you. And don't consider the things of the old. old. What does that mean? That means don't let any of your past have control of your lives. Amen. Amen. Many situations in your past will try to be dominant in your life. We try to control your life. We'll try to put you down. You know, look at Jacob's life. You know, you look at his past. This is what it is. And if he continues to think, oh my God, I cheated my brother, I cheated my father, I cheated my family, I have been blessed, all these kind of things, how can God use me and all these kind of things, what is going to happen? He will not be able to move forward. So God is giving him a solution. God is giving the children of Israel a solution and telling, this is how I dealt with Israel. This is how I dealt with Jacob. Unless Jacob becomes Israel, he, they cannot be blessed. He cannot be blessed. The word of God says, no weapons formed against whom? Israel will prosper. But the problem is that we are all living double lives. We call ourselves Israel, but our actions are whose? Jacob's. And we are claiming which words? No weapon formed against Israel will prosper. But our actions are whose? 
Jacobs. So, will the weapons formed against you, will it, will it prosper? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unless and until you become completely an Israel, these weapons will continue to attack your lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You claim to be Israel, but your actions are completely hypocritical. You are still like a Jacob. You are still deceiving people. You are still cheating people. You are still doing all the wrong things. But you come into the presence of God, you behave like Israel. For how many hours? One hour, two hour? And after the two hours, you go back to becoming what? Jacob. And what are you claiming yourself? No weapon formed against Israel. He keeps on repeating that. Will prosper. Sorry, it doesn't work like that. Prophet Isaiah is telling the children of Israel, you need to understand how Jacob became Israel, how God transformed his life from Jacob to Israel. And only then he was able to bless them. Praise the Lord. God had to transform Jacob to Israel. Why? Because of his, you know, why was he loved so much? Let's read verse 1, 43 verse 1. Let's try to understand that. Oh my God, time is going so fast. But now thus saith the Lord. And God is saying, now I s thus saith the Lord. What is he saying? That created thee. I am the one who created you, Jacob. Then. O Jacob, and he that formed thee. And God, what did he do? Formed. He had to, in its written form, but the actual word supposed to be there is he transformed you. He changed you. Amen? Yes. He created you as Jacob, but he had to do one thing. What is that? Transform you to Israel. Unless and until you become Israel, the promises which was promised by God to Abraham and Isaac had to be fulfilled through whom? To Israel. What is the promise? I'm going to make you a great nation. Genesis 12. I'm going to make your name great. And you will be a blessing in yourself. So for that promise has to be fulfilled. Even today, those promises are being fulfilled to the through the children of Israel. Let's clap our hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Our God is a promise-keeping God. Whatever God has promised, He promised to the fathers, our children are reaping the promises. Even when they go against the word of God. Even when they do things the wrong things. Why are they receiving all these blessings? Because at one time, the fathers were faithful to God. Amen? Amen? Because of their faithfulness, children are being blessed. Amen? Why was Isaac able to drink water from the wells which he did not dig? Why? Because the promises were given to Abraham. Now, why is the same condition with Jacob? He is not a good person in our sight. What do we call him? Oh, look at that guy. You know, if it's us, we will give him all names, right? And then if there is, if you have a social media, you know, we will try to highlight it slowly, right? See what God is calling him. Let's read that couple of verses and I will stop. Oh, Israel. First verse? Yeah, go ahead, continue. But now thus said the Lord that created thee. The, I say Jacob, the Lord that created you, Jacob, then. And he that formed thee. O he Israel, that formed you. O Israel. O Israel, then. Fear not. What is he selling? Fear not. For See I how God is calling his children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. First thing he tells us is that fear not. You know, we have so much fear. What is my future looking like? What is going to happen to my future? I have a terrible past. Amen. Amen. Mm. Our problem is that I have a terrible past. With this past, how can I have a good future? But what is God telling him? Fear not. Let's clap our hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It does not matter. What matters is your calling. 
you need to understand if you are called by God there is a God who will sustain your future and then continue yeah I'll read a couple of verses for then I have, for I have redeemed thee what did I do I redeemed you then I have called thee by I, thy name I have called yeah called thee by thy name thou art mine how, how, how was he called by the name with the billions of people on earth each and every one of us are called by God not hey brother or hey sister how by your name I, you might think I am speaking to the person sitting next to you or behind you or in front of you no I am speaking directly to you because I called you by your name clap your hands and give glory to God today evening hallelujah hallelujah see what happens next continue then thou art mine what is he telling them first he is telling fear not then what is he saying I called you by your name then what is he saying you are mine you are mine How do you want to clap your hands and give glory to God today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, we are surviving, we are existing, we, have, we are able to see year 2020, not because we were perfect, it is the grace of God that has been overflowing in our lives. Let's give glory to God. Let's clap our hands and give glory to God. There were people who were healthier than us, could not see the next year. Hallelujah. There were people, hallelujah, better than us and uh, more in every way. Hallelujah. We are able to be here in the presence of God. It is all by the grace of God. See, continue next words yeah when thou passes through the waters i will what is god telling him when thou passes jacob waters, what is going to happen to you i will be there's a lot of trouble waiting for you praise the lord praise the lord the hallelujah you have a shady past yes when you have a shady past what's going to happen trouble will follow everywhere you go yes no yes it will that's just the way it is but remember one thing fear not i have called you by your name then what do you say then what did he say i will be with thee i am with thee hallelujah how many want to give glory to god i just i just you know i just want to praise god for his faithfulness hallelujah hallelujah i wanted to do some other message hallelujah god said just do this message because i already preached it so many times hallelujah in different congregations hallelujah god said preach this once again over here hallelujah let's clap our hands and give glory to god hallelujah i believe somebody wanted to hear this message today hallelujah that you are called by god by your name hallelujah and god is telling you hallelujah not to fear hallelujah I am the one who has redeemed you Israel hallelujah read the next words yeah go ahead yeah and through the rivers they shall not when trouble comes thee. your way the rivers what will happen they shall not overflow they thee. will not overflow you then when thou walkest through the fire then when you walk through fire thou shalt not be burned you will not be burned you know the waters don't you think they have the power to overflow you yes don't you think the trouble that was following you had the power to destroy you yes? yes it had the power but one thing was there there was somebody by your side who was mightier than the rivers how many want to clap your hands and give glory to god hallelujah there was somebody who was mightier in your life hallelujah who did not allow the rivers to overflow you who did not allow the fire to consume you because the almighty god said that i love you fear not whatever is coming against you i will take care of that let's clap and give glory to god hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah if you ask Chandrak Meshina Bindrum, they will tell you a testimony. What is the testimony? Yes, we were thrown into fire. What happened to the fire? The fire could not touch us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The fire could not touch us. It was supposed to hallelujah, consume us, but it did not touch me. It did not touch the hair of my body, but did one thing. Hallelujah. The cords that had been tied on my hands. Hallelujah. The fire consumed that. I only want to clap your hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. The enemy will tie you and throw you in fire, but there is an almighty God that will not allow the fire to touch you or your body or your hair. Let's give glory to God. Hallelujah. 
because there is an almighty God with you. You ask the children of Israel, they went through the Red Sea. The rivers were supposed to overflow them. They would say, the waters could not overflow us. Why? Because, hallelujah, God had made a path for us to go through that. How many want to clap your hands and give glory to God? Hallelujah. The same waters, what happened? The hallelujah, the army that followed, hallelujah, them to destroy them. What happened to them? That became their deathbed. The same waters which became a way for the children of Israel became a deathbed for whom? The armies of Egypt. You know, we are children of God. We need to understand. I've got to con conclude this. I'll just read that portion and I will stop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We need to understand what we are enjoying in our lives. We are children of God. We have a divine protection from God. We are children of God. We have a divine providence from God. Hallelujah. When we need something, there is a God who provides it. Hallelujah. Not because we are worthy. It is just because he loves us. How many want to clap your hands and give glory to God? Hallelujah. We thought we would not make it to the next day. We thought nothing is going to happen in our lives. Hallelujah. Maybe it is our job and it is our marriage and it is our children and all these kind of things which is hallelujah going through hell. But there is one thing, hallelujah, when the peace of God is in your life there is a God who will sustain you hallelujah hallelujah that's why we read hallelujah in Philippians what it says that hallelujah when you pray what happens the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. understanding will fill your hearts it does not say that I'm answering your prayers but what does it say it will give you peace when you have peace you'll be able to tackle your problems amen Whatever situation that you're going through, when the peace of God comes into your heart, you'll be able to focus the problem and you will be able to overcome the situation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just read that verse and I will stop. Hallelujah. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. What is happening? What? Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Then. For I am the Lord thy God. Yeah. The Holy One of Israel. Yeah. Thy Savior. What is he telling him? I am your God. I am your savior, then. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Yeah, read thee. verse 4. I want you to understand. What, what, the world is calling Jacob by different names. And see what God is calling him. Since thou was precious in my sight. What is God call, telling him? What is God precious. telling him? Precious. You are precious in my sight. How many want to clap your hands and give glory to God? Hallelujah. See how much ever your past is shady. But there is a God. If he has chosen you, he is telling what? You are precious. precious in my sight. Yeah, go ahead. Then. Thou hast been honorable. What is that? Honorable. Ha! Huh? How can you call this guy honorable? Huh? How can you call this guy honorable? Praise the Lord. I wish I had the time to explain that. But see what God is calling you. You are precious. You are honorable. Then, go ahead. And I have loved thee. And I have? Loved. Loved thee. Let's clap our hands once again. Give glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's come back to the scripture that we started. Hallelujah. And God is telling to prophet Isaiah, tell the children of Israel one thing. Tell the children of Israel one thing. What is that? I'm we going to do a new thing. new thing. And then, it shall spring, spring forth. forth. Shall he not? Know it. know it. If you believe, clap your hands and give glory to God. Hallelujah. Why this new thing is going to happen is because there is a God who loves you regardless of your past. May these scriptures, may these verses be your promise words for 2020 and may you see the new thing happening in each of your lives. May the Almighty God bless us with these words. Praise the Lord.